Okay, so we dropped off the truck. I don't know if you can hear me very well. It's really loud in here. And uh, we picked up our next gig. So off to the house. Oh my God, this thing puts a smile on my face. I love driving it. It's a very uh, visceral experience. You're getting to smell the fuel, to hear the engine. You just, ah, yeah. <laughs> this car is cool, I love it. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Mobile Detail in Edmonton. My name is Let's. your first time joining us. Where have you been? Today, I want to teach you guys some stuff that I learned off of watching Larry at MONYC's video, and then I took my nerdy little brain and added some thoughts to help me with this car's paint because the oxidation levels are just crazy on this thing. Um, you're, I'm cutting through layers and layers and layers. So I had a chat with Larry. Um, we, we talked about some different ideas and we both came up with the thought that hydration is, uh, it's not only important in washing your car, but it's important in getting something as dry and as old and as neglected as this paint to looking good again. So we're gonna talk about hydrating the paint. We're gonna talk about the mow down techniques. We're gonna talk about how often to blow out the pad. We're gonna talk about what pads I used and then the different levels of compounds. Um, sometimes I use a mixture of compounds. Sometimes I just use one. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk quickly about hydration. I'm gonna show you this paint. This paint is, well, it's original. <laughs> <laughs> um, hasn't really had a whole lot done to it. It was supposed to be a project for the owner and his father. That didn't happen. And uh, now it's pretty much, let's see if we can pull this color back out, re-protect the paint, and get all of this overspray markings off of the paint that it's absorbed because it's so dry. Here, let me show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. So here, is a nice example of what I'm talking about. There, 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 just there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and make it look like this. Okay, so this is a 68 GTX 440. It is completely original and it shows, <laughs> um, it hasn't had a lot of love. Our job is to do that. So I'm gonna show you guys some cool steps. Let's start off with what Larry and I were discussing and by Larry, Larry at MANYC. Um, I wanna show you guys some steps that this thing needed. Um, I'll give you a quick little clip now. This is what the trunk lid looked like before. This is what it looks like now. Okay, so like I said, we're going to lubricate the paint, get it hydrated basically. And I'm going to work on a very small section right here. We're going to do this fender. So let's hydrate this paint. Uh, what I'm doing to use, what I'm using to do that is I'm using Minzernas 3500. Um, I like this for the lubricity that it has. It has no fillers, no extra components. Um, our Geon has an SIO2 base um, and uh, I just, I want to keep this as raw as possible. So just put a little bit on your application sponge and that was a lot. And basically all I'm doing is just rubbing it in gently. And trying to hydrate the paint, give it a little bit of love. Here, I've got a lot on there, so let's just take that straight down. Now, before doing this, I went through all my proper wash techniques. As you can see, we pre-soaked the car, we foam cannoned the car to give it a, an extra layer of protection with the suds. I added some iron remover to uh, the paint as well to help remove any of the iron that's on top of the paint and um, just try to combat all that. After we did that, we moved into the clay bar section of the paint and uh, didn't really do any filming on that because, well, it's clay barring. You've seen it a million times. But 
After I was done, I've got rags that are just blue. Single stage paint, which means no clear coat. Um, it, uh, yeah, it, it was, there was a lot. So anyway, just hydrating this paint as best I can. I've done it now from this section all the way down to the end. And uh, that's pretty much it, a very simple step. But even to the touch now, it feels way different. If I'm going to mow down this, which means I'm going to take the polisher and do a bunch of quick passes, I'm going to find that this is a lot more gentle uh, on the paint as opposed to going on the dry paint and then trying to soak up all the oxidation and all the clear, oh, not clear coat, habit, all the oxidation and all the problems that are on top. So let's get into the mow down technique. Okay, so mow down technique. I've got my three inch pad because this is way too small of a section to use a six inch on. I'm gonna rock the Menzerna Super Heavy Cut 300. And to be honest with you, we're gonna go very, very light amount. This is a Rupaz cutting disc. And as you can see, I used it on the trunk. It's completely discolored. And then the amount that we're gonna put on is that. That's it. So now that we've got that on there, we're gonna take it, we're gonna find our field and I always like to tap. As you can see, the shininess of the pad, that's all of the oxidation and all the nasty that's inside of the paint right there. So I'm gonna go blow it out. And all I've done was just a quick mow down of here. I'm gonna do that probably one or two more times and then we'll get into the cutting. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, like I said, I'm going to switch to our cutting pad. I've lifted the hood up so we don't burn the edges of here. Um, I've got some tricks that I'm going to do later for not burning the edge whenever we're doing it. Basically the same thing except for I'm going to tape off under here so it doesn't roll and burn this edge as well. But um, let's talk about this piece. So now we're going to move on to the cutting stage. So I'm going to switch to Gion Quartz Compound Plus. Um, super great cutting abilities. Uh, very smooth, a lot of lubricity. Um, it's just, it allows you to cut a little bit longer. But I've switched to a brand new pad because the other pads, well, A, they're not very pretty to look at anymore. They're all blue and black looking. But uh, I'm gonna show you guys how much discoloration you get with one pass of uh, cutting here. So we're gonna go just one small line and we'll put that right chop and here we go so we stopped our line right here and we're gonna keep up with that so we'll just make a little little mark right there just so I remember That's done with. Now look at the pad. So all that you see there, let's turn a little light here. All that you're looking at right there is paint and oxidation. I'd say this is more heavy oxidation that's coming off and uh, paint as well. But let's go blow this out. And all we're doing, I'd say that's about, I don't know, six or seven inch panel by four and a half inches there, maybe five. But uh, yeah, just that amount and the pad already needs to be blown out. This is a land yacht. It's got acres and acres of paint that we're gonna go through. So give you an idea. And the paint heating up very nicely. Okay, so as you can see, I've blown out the pad now. The residual paint that's coming off of the car, because it is single stage, is being left in the pad, which is why I was saying switch to a new pad, show you guys what it looks like pretty brand new. 
and then we'll go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep working this entire panel until I get it the way I want it, and then I'll show you guys hydration, cut, and then back up here, we already know what it looks like, but I'll show you guys the differences and the levels that you're gonna be able to see as far as clarity comes and how it goes. Okay, so now we've done a few passes with the machine. Let's wipe it off see what it looks like and then we'll go and do our full correction like we would normally do because let's be honest the oxidation has gone now we're chasing scratches and we're going to start chasing clarity okay so i've cut the panel mowed it down probably two three times i've cut it and uh, i want to explain something to you just in case there's any confusion so mow down technique very very little um compound like on larry's show they were talking about um we furthered that with this vehicle by starting off with hydration because it's again so dry it's never really been loved taken care of loved but it's in a sense of polishing and maintaining that um again small amount of compound very fast passes a uh, very small amount of passes and then going over and blowing it out and then going over a small section with a faster uh, than normal cutting pass to remove the excess layers and then when you're going a full cut you'll usually see me do like a little loop a thin amount but not a lot it's just kind of like my little signature thing I do um, habit I guess more than anything but you'll see that my pad speed instead of doing the mow down technique is like this and then getting rid of the next layers is more like this and then whenever I'm actually polishing it's more like this just a slow steady stream and then going back and forth and trying to maintain even coverage now this vehicle has a swell going down it goes up and then right before the engine it goes down again so you probably saw me lift the pad up you'll see me turn the pad sideways so that way instead of the pad being flat and butting up against it and then trying to go up i'll actually curve the pad sideways and run it through the actual stream because round curve meets round curve it goes through um, you'll also probably see me get up here and try to cut this ridge line i do do that but i also turn it sideways at the same time so just in case there was some confusion on the differences of cut uh, the in between between mow down and cut and then the proper mow down pass um, again I, I can't thank you enough for putting that video out there because normally I would have taken a wool pad to all this and just cut out as much oxidation as possible it would have taken a hell of a lot longer time and it would have cost me a lot more money in pads this is the proper way to do it and it seems like it's a hell of a lot easier it does take forever but you're getting really really nice results let me show you what we got so far okay so let's just wipe this off real quick okay so here we go choose our lights that is the look we're looking for over here you can see the line that I had placed in before it's right there and then you can see all the spots the overspray spots the the, the parts that got just a tremendous amount uh, embedded into the paint plus all the oxidation and all the problem um, definitely the colors even different so that guys is what we're looking at that's what we're going after the next steps are very simple steps that you're used to they're going to be refinement trying to pull the color out but before i do that um i'm not going to do it for camera and keep my line there and all that i just wanted to show you the differences of how it works 
Um, at the uh, video, we're going to place somewhere in the video uh, the trunk, the different steps that I used to get the trunk to where it's at now. Um, I think I even put some tape on there and wrote some numbers on, so we'll probably put that towards the end. But anyway, just wanted to give you guys an idea of what I'm doing and how it's going and the it's just it's it's a really really good technique you all should be doing it on your single stages with your heavy oxidation it'll help you out it'll save you money in pads and it actually works phenomenal in my case the only thing different than what they did on their videos is uh, a hydration uh, to begin with because this one isn't like that Lamborghini you saw in his video this one is extremely dry and heavily oxidized so we just want to preserve as much of this paint as possible to keep it as original as possible but pull the color pull the clarity and just give him something that he can cruise to the shows and be proud of thanks again for watching hope you guys are having an amazing day we'll talk to you next time